Stomp, 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 stomp. Hey Brick fans, this is Dave from Brick 101 and today I'm going to show you how to build the Ginzo Waco department store from the 1954 Godzilla film. Before we jump into the building instructions, I've got a few updates about our Lego Ideas Godzilla project. So we launched our Godzilla project back in February, so in the course of just one month we've already received over 1,000 supporters on Lego Ideas. So many thanks to all of you who have gone through the process of supporting Godzilla on LEGO Ideas, we need to get up to 10,000 supporters before LEGO will officially consider turning this into a set. However, we're 10% of the way there, so that's a great start for just the first month. So I did a poll on my community tab where over 3,000 people responded saying they had supported it on LEGO Ideas, which is not true. So I think some people might not understand all the steps you need to take to support something on LEGO Ideas. So here's a quick video uh, playthrough of how to support something on LEGO Ideas. So if you click the link in the video description to go to Godzilla's LEGO Ideas project page, if you already have a LEGO Ideas account, you can click support, do a quick survey, and and then confirm your support and the number of supporters goes up by one. Yay! If you don't already have a LEGO Ideas account, the process is a little more complicated. You'll need a LEGO ID. You have to be 13 years or older to create a LEGO Ideas account, or if you know a parent or older brother or sister or friend who's 13 years or older, they can create a LEGO Ideas account and support it. Um, you can encourage them to do that. It's a bit of a lengthy process signing up. Uh, you can connect to a pre-existing LEGO ID. Uh, then you'll have to wait for a confirmation email. And then you can come back and do the actual support step. So if you really want to see this Godzilla as an official LEGO set, uh, please go through these steps or work with a adult or somebody else to go through these steps. Yay! Another awesome thing that has happened since Godzilla launched on LEGO Ideas is that Nick Mastromico took the time to make a LEGO digital design file of Godzilla so you can go and find all of the pieces to buy Godzilla now on my website. There's a link in the description where you can uh, download a parts list or go straight to Brick Al and get all the parts added to your cart at once and purchase them online if you want to build your own LEGO Godzilla right now. Another thing I wanted to say about Godzilla is that I redesigned Godzilla's atomic breath. So when I first did it, I just did it as a simple flame piece. But as many people pointed out, Godzilla's atomic breath is actually blue as opposed to red and orange. So I got some uh, purple and blue pieces to build this kind of atomic breath, um, which I can show in more detail if you're interested. Um, but uh, definitely much more atomic breathy uh, looking than that original piece I did. Okay, with all those updates out of the way, let's talk quickly about the Ginza Waco department store. This model was designed by Mark Larson. He's a really great freelance Lego designer I've been working with for a lot of how to build videos recently. One of his specialties is architecture, so he was really excited to design this building. Um, I was originally thinking this could be maybe like a 300 piece building and complement Godzilla, but this building ended up having almost as many pieces as Godzilla, so I decided to do it as a whole separate thing rather than try and include it in the set. So um, let's start looking at the building. So when we were designing this building, uh, made the decision to do it to the Micropolis standard. So Micropolis is a standard that is mostly promoted by Twin Lug, uh, which is a LEGO user group out of uh, St. Paul and Minneapolis. And uh, they do great displays at Brickworld Chicago using this standard where uh, a city block is reduced to a 16 by 16 footprint. Um, which is built up kind of like this, where there's a layer of plate, then a layer of brick with Technic bricks um, for connection points going off on each side. Then there's another layer of plate, 
And then there's tile all around the edge for where the road, walkways, and sidewalk are. I slightly modified this base um, from a standard uh, Micropolis base uh, to fit the building. And since we built the sidewalk out of plate rather than tile and it's curved, it's actually a little bit above where the sidewalk would normally be on a Micropolis standard but uh, that only really matters if you're building this for a giant display at a Lego convention with other Micropolis people, and then you could probably figure it out. Um, another option is just to use a 16 by 16 base plate. Um, Lego isn't doing base plates as much as they used to. They are now doing like plate plates. Um, I don't have a 16 by 16 in dark gray, but I have eight by eights, so you could also imagine lining up four of those as a uh, base for this, depending on what you're doing. So those are some different base options. This is actually only gonna take up 14 by 14 of uh, the base and the rest is kind of where the roadway is um, and it's also curved but uh, that's just kind of the footprint you're thinking about with this building. Okay, so the first layer of the actual building we're gonna do is the sidewalk layer, which I guess isn't part of the actual building. Um, so I'm using four wide light gray plates to kind of trace the outline of the building here. So that's a four by six and a four by four. Then I've got one of these four by four curved corner plates. That goes on there, covers up a little bit of the crosswalk. Happen to have a four by 10 for over here. Uh, doing another four by four back here, and then filling this in with a six by 10. And yes, that leaves a big gap there. Uh, you could fill that in if you really wanted to, but I'm just making there be a hole in the floor because I'm that's how I roll, I don't know. All right, uh, over here, this is a one by 10 plate in tan, so now we're really building up the building building. So that goes one off from the front here, uh, one by two and a one by three in tan for the back corner. Then another one by 10 plate, should take you all the way up to one away from that. Going across the front here, two by two in black offset back one uh, from the tan line then a tan corner, one by three and one by two. Then we'll take one of these three by three corner plates um, in, then we'll take one of these three by three rounded corner plates in tan on the front here, matching up nicely with the curve of the sidewalk there. Um, where is this going? Oh yeah, and then this is a corner plate that hides kind of behind that there and is hanging into the gap, but that's okay. And then one by two, one by three, car horn in the background, and a corner plate in tan. Another two by two black plate that's back one. Then just to finish off some stuff up here, take a two by two round brick, any color. I'm just using white because I've got a bunch of them. Then some one by two tiles in light gray and one of these fancy new curved corner tiles in light gray on top of that tan piece in the front. And we'll be doing some more building on top of that soon. Okay, now it's sub-assembly time. So let's build four little window units. Start with a one by two light gray plate, one by two clear brick, one by two clear plate, and a one by two clear tile. Do that four times and then you've got four of these little doobly-doos. Next layer up, we're gonna start by doing some one wide tan brick all around the back here. The exact pieces don't really matter. You just wanna go all around that plate layer except stopping uh, fire engine. For the next level, get some one wide tan brick. You're gonna use a lot of it uh, throughout this building. It uh, doesn't really matter what uh, shapes and sizes you're using here. Basically, you're just going all the way around that plate layer and leaving a two wide space there. That's because we're gonna do some one by two plates there plus a one by one plate, leaving a tiny little divot there. On top of these black uh, two by two plates, you're gonna take some one by two clear bricks do that on both sides. 
Then over here, let's do this way. We'll do a one by two brick with two one by two plates. Hey, we've got that window doobly-doo we created earlier. That goes there. Next, we're gonna create a one by one brick with two one by one plates. You're gonna to wanna to create four of those, four little sub-assembly doobly-doos next to your window doobly-doos, and then another tan doobly-doo, and alternate the same thing around the corner side here. Doot, 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 doot. Window, tan doobly-doo, and then all the way over here, what you're gonna do is take two one by two plates. Those go next to the window there. Do a one by one brick on the back part of that and a one by four arch brick up in the front here. That's a little side door entrance. Next layer up, do some one by four plates in tan plus a one by three plate. That goes over there. On top of this, we're gonna take a one by two black and clear plate, put that on top of those clear bricks towards the front bit there. Then go back here with some one by N bricks all the way around to that arch piece. And you can fill that in with a one by one plate just to make those nice and even. Um, over here, two by two in black and some clear plates on top of that. That's just to get a little bit of interesting detail going on there, though it's mostly hidden, unless you look right through the arch. And then a two by three plate to even that out. Okay, now these little details here are some of my favorite parts of the building. So start with a one by two black plate with a clip centered on the front, then get one of these fancy smancy uh, one by one black plates that has a round part and a clip. Clip that into there, build on top of that with a clear brick and two clear plates, one by twos of course. So that's one little window bit. The other one, gonna take a two by two round plate in any color, then a two by two round plate with all the handles all the way around in any color. Then the bit we're gonna add onto that is some one by two plates, clear, two of those, then a one by one clear plate, and a black one by one with clip. Um, if they had those in clear, I'd be using them out the wazoo, but they don't, so black was the best color choice there. One by two plate clear and a one by two tile clear. Now these two bits are gonna go on, so this one goes over here and adds a light, nice little detail over this entry doorway, uh, which will be nicely framed by an arch in a minute. Now this bit goes here on top of that uh, brick that we've got. And then this is gonna fit in the center here by clipping on to that uh, diagonal piece there. And it will be framed nicely by some other things in a minute, um, but it's just a cool way of getting a diagonal window up there. Okay, let's add a little bit more framing. So another one by four arch goes on the front over that nice little detail there. Then two one by one plates go stacked up right behind it, fill in that little spot. Uh, then we're gonna go around with one by one brick all the way around to thereabouts. Then this is a two by three brick that I've already put a one by two tile on, the purpose of which will become clear later. And then a one by two brick here. So filling in these spots up here, Get some one by four tan plates, some cheese slope that are clear, three of those, and one that is dark tan. Build one piece like so, doot, 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 and build another one that is mirror of that. Then you're gonna take a one by one brick with stud on one side in tan, and then this fits right in that slot, so connect and then goes down and it should nicely uh, support that diagonal window or push it out of frame altogether but you can always put the diagonal window back in. Um, they do actually line up pretty nicely overall.
So here's a quick look at what the uh, front bottom of the building should look like now. Uh, you can add in little micro figures as people uh, walking through the doors and looking in the windows and all the little windows along the top looking pretty good. Um, really like how this diagonal window, uh, you know, in lieu of a rounded window piece here, uh, really worked out nicely. And fun little details with those dots on the side. Now to go around with a layer of plate and tile to line it up with the brick layer up there. A 2x8 all the way across here. 2x4 that goes nicely back onto that circle plate connects that. 3x3 three three corner plate, which is very loosely connected, but that is how it is. 2x3 two plate up here, a 2x2 two two and a 2x3. Then with a bunch of 1x2 light gray tiles alternating around, uh, where does that go? Yeah, I think there, 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 that, 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 that. So basically skipping a space all the way around and then one of these corner round tiles whoop, up in the front and don't be scared if it flies off like it did for me. Okay, we're gonna start fast forwarding pretty quick through the rest of the build. Not literally, but just going faster on stuff. Two one by one plates over there. On top of that, a one by one brick with one stud. That's gonna point in. Ditto over on the other side, one by one, and then fill in a whole bunch of layers of one by n brick. So we'll do one layer, fills in what we just did there. Then we're gonna stay off two from here and fill in another layer. And also end that right there, so there's a two gap there. Do a third layer, leaving the same gap. Do layer four. and layer five the same. This next part of the build is really gonna test the limits of your collection of one by one bricks with stud on one side in tan. Um, luckily, Pick a Brick recently had that on the wall, so I was able to get a whole Pick a Brick cup full of them, and now I've got more pieces like that than I know what to do with. So check your local Lego store for the Pick a Brick section for a whole bunch of those. Um, you might get lucky. Uh, if not, I'll show you some substitutions you can do uh, on other layers of those. Uh, but for right now, uh, start with some 1x2 plates stacked up, two of those, then do a layer of a brick and a brick with stud, then another two layers of plate, then another brick and stud, and then another two layers of plate, and you'll do two of those which mirror each other. Hello! Blip, 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 blip. These fit in those nice gaps that we left for them, uh, lining up with the existing studs below them. Another piece that you'll need quite a few of are these one by one bricks with studs on two sides that are in a corner shape. Um, you can steal some from the Pug poly bag that just came out. Sorry, little Pug. Uh, or you can get a whole bunch of them in this brick calendar set. I believe there's 30 some in that. So start off with two of those and some one by one plates with a circle clip, like so. So the bricks with the corner studs will go on the corners and then fill in a layer of brick which will nicely connect uh, those doobly-doos that were hanging off. So bloop, bloop. All right, time for even more sub-assemblies. So you're basically gonna build the same thing five times, uh, but with some slight variations. So get some one by eight tan plates. Uh, you're gonna want 10 of those, but for each one you need two. Uh, and then you want a whole bunch of clear and dark tan 
plates, and tiles. So basically the idea is that three of them are going to be alternating this way, starting with a clear, then dark tan, and two of them are going to be starting this way, alternating with dark tan and clear. And the top layer is tile, and the layers underneath are plates. However, some of them can go uh, extra deep, um, so be like two longs if you run out of just one dots, um, whereas the ones that are final at the end for the top layer, you will need one deep tiles as opposed to two deep tiles uh, because otherwise they'll hit something important. Um, so just to show you how this is built really quick, um, plate, 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 maybe fast forward this, plate. Then make a sandwich, and then uh, put some dressing on the bottom of the sandwich, I guess, <laughs> with plates again. Uh, and you know, I'm using two deep clears, uh, but one deep dark tan because I had lots of each of those. But you could do things differently. And then for the very top, a dresser, a layer of tile dressing. Tile, tile, these tiles are too deep, but not too deep, if you know what I mean. One of those twos was spelled with a W, the other one was spelled with two O's. Alright, so this is one that you're going to build. Uh, another one of those you can build is exactly the same in that it can be too deep all the way through. And another one of those will just be limited by that layer of tiles only being allowed to be one deep. So build three that are like that. And then you're going to build two that are the opposite alternating um, positions. So one that can be too deep, though I'm only too deep part of the way there. And the other one which can only be too deep um, back here and not all the way forward. So. Build all those. Yay, sub assemblies. Now we're gonna do some other kind of sub assemblies. Um, so this time is where we're gonna use a lot of those one by one bricks with a stud, but you could also use some one by four bricks with stud here. So let's start with one of those and then below it do a one by one brick and two one by one plates. So there's a little gap there then layer two one by two plates, then some bricks with studs, then one by two one by two plates, then I'll do a two wide brick with stud on the side, and then some plates. Then at the top you will need a corner brick, again from a pug or a brick calendar. One by one plate, you can put a one by, sorry, one by one brick, and then you put a one by one plate with circle clip on the front. Now you need three of those, two um, which are going this direction and can have the extra deep studs, and then one going that direction that should not be that deep and should only go uh, possibly that deep on the plates, otherwise just be one deep. So, do 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 three that go like that, and then the other three should be mirrored. Uh, again, two of them could go deeper, though I didn't go that deep here. They're just uh, kind of one deep on the brick with stud, and then have a flat side. And then this one up here, which can only be one deep aside for the plate layers, which can be too deep uh, because they magically match up with the thing that they would otherwise interfere with. That probably didn't make a lot of sense. Let's build stuff. Um, excuse me, can I have my wings back, please? No, I'm using them for my atomic breath. It looks really cool now. Well, I do agree that it looks cool, but, um, I used to be able to fly and now I can't. See? Just have these, like, wing stumps. Not very effective for generating lift. That sounds like your problem. <laughs> uh, 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 one other super quick sub-assembly before we put these all into place. Some 1x8 plates in tan, two layers of that. Then just one layer of alternating dark tan and clear. This can be uh, too deep if you need to. And then a plate and tile layer in tan. Uh, so 
slightly different than some of those other sub-assemblies. So you should now have a massive pile of sub-assemblies. Let's start with the last sub-assembly we built. This uh, sandwich here is going to go line up on those studs that way. Then we'll take one of these sub-assemblies like this that can be extra deep, lines up right next to that, connect to that one of the sub-assemblies like this, uh, so that there are clear at the top, tan at the bottom, tile on this side, and it's sometimes easier to attach like this first, and then put the brick down that way. And then another sub-assembly like this, plus, do 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 do, where's the one I want? This one. Why have I lost the sub-assembly I need? I think it's this one. No, this one. Okay, so then take a sub-assembly like this, and then this sub-assembly that's uh, got clear up here, but is only one deep there. That clips in there, and then follow that up with this little sub-assembly here. So there's studs going that way. And then coming this way, we'll take one of these sub-assemblies going here that if we flip this way has clear on the top. And then one of these sub-assemblies like this, plus another sub-assembly like that. And then another sub-assembly like this, plus the one that only goes one deep on the tile layer. And then, last but not least, this sub-assembly here. And so now that whole layer of uh, a whole bunch of things should be mostly full aside from some empty spaces at the front. Don't worry, we've got even more sub-assemblies coming up. So a uh, 1x8 plate in tan covered with alternating cheese slopes in clear and tan. Two of those which have the opposite patterns, so they line up like so. Then we're going to build another sub-assembly sandwich with a bottom layer of a 1x8 plate. The layer above that will be alternating clear and dark tan in 1x1 plates. Uh, no 1x2 plates allowed here. Next layer will be alternating 1x1 tan plates with 1x1 tan plates with clip. Uh, so plate and a clip and a plate and a clip and a plate and a clip and that's that layer. And then the top layer is a 1x8 tile, and underneath that you've got alternating dark tan and clear, so it lines up like a nice, delicious sandwich. These sub-assemblies over here are 2x2 two two round bricks with a round plate, and then a round plate with all the handles. You need four of those. Stack, stack, stackity stack. And then you can put a 2x2 two two round plate with a 1x1 one one plate of any color on top of it, like so. So take this big old column and line it up back here. Uh, you'll notice, as I mentioned, these one by two uh, plates fit perfectly in the gaps in this column um, so they don't interfere with the handles. Uh, so that is why you're allowed to go a little bit deeper with that column just every other layer. Then for the final touches here, taking uh, those sub-assemblies, so you're going to want the one that has cheese slope like so, the clear ones pointing in to line up with our diagonal piece, which is this nice sandwich here where all the clips should attach to all the handles on that center column. And you might have to finagle a little bit to get these all nice and friendly, but they should all line up nicely. So continuing up, take one of those nice 3x3 three three rounded corner plates in tan, cover it up with the usual light gray tiles, 1x2s and a rounded corner tile. Then take a 2x10 plate in tan and some 1x2 tiles in tan and light gray. Line it up going this way. 
and do the same thing over here, but all of the tiles will be light gray this time. And that should line up nicely. And then just go ahead and do a layer of one wide plate all the way around. Doesn't super matter, but I think these are one by tens. Filling in that pretty nicely. Okay, now the layer above that, we're gonna do brick. So one off of the front there, do some brick. Going back, uh, brick, brick, brick. And this one will go all the way to the end here. And then the layer above that will be offset one from this side. So like so. And then going all the way to line up nicely here. So like that and like that. And as below, so it is above, do some one by one black plates with clip, uh, seven of them around all of these empty spots. And you could do these in tan if you have it that way, but I don't. Then a six long bar over there and some flex tubing that I believe is 18-ish long. Should curve around pretty nice. Like paradise. Are those some adorable little sub-assemblies over there? Yes, they are. Yes, they are. We're gonna do more sub-assemblies. Uh, I figure if you're watching at this point of the video, you don't really care what my voice sounds like. So, uh, six sub-assemblies. This is uh, some one by two tan plates, alternating with layers of dark tan and clear. Plate, plate, plate tiles at the top. Some of them can be too deep. This one needs to only be one deep on the tile level. If you hadn't noticed, I'm using round uh, clear tiles up here because I ran out of square one by one tiles uh, pretty early on trying to do this. I think they're kind of rare actually. Uh, and then the other sub assemblies are gonna be the same but mirrored, so two of them that can go too deep and the other one which can only be one deep at the top. So six little sub assemblies like so. Then this sub assembly, it's kind of fun. Uh, one by one plate of any color and shape there. Then some one by two plates on top of that in tan. Then a one by two upward slope in any color. I just did black for consistency. Then we're gonna do a corner brick, corner snot brick that is, and a dark tan one by one tile. You want two of them with the corner stud facing left and two of them with the corner stud facing right. So that's four total. And two last little sub-assemblies, which barely count as sub-assemblies. A corner brick plus a dark tan tile. And another one of those that's opposite plus some one by one bricks. And by bricks, I mean plates. And by this, I mean let's be done. Hey, okay, sub-assembly time. Uh, so that one goes there. This one goes here. Then we want, which one goes where? All right, uh, so one of the ones that can be too deep ends with a clear tile on top over there. Then one of these doodies, doodads, with another one of those, bloopy bloppy. Then another one of these with the one of those not, no, no, not that one. With this one of these that ends with a one instead of a two. I'm gonna see how few words I can say and still have this make sense. Blippy bloppy. Uh, yeah, this one over here that goes too deep. Uh, this thing over here plus this one. This thing over here plus this one that only goes one deep, and again, we have the front corner left empty. Um, remember this old sub-assembly that was a round brick, round plate, and then round plate with handles? Do another one of those, and top it off with our very last round two by two plate there. Uh, yeah. So then this is a plate of any color, two one by two plates, and then a corner brick, with a dark tan tile. 
that can fit under there and then do the same but mirrored over here so those kind of look like little ducks quack quack uh, yeah this is a one by two plate with a clear cheese slope and a tan cheese slope one of those goes like that and the mirrored version over here and then our final little sandwich here starts with a one by two in tan then one by ones in clear and dark tan you know alternating except the middle is a clip and the top is tile Blarg, almost done. Now on the top here, uh, another one of these three by three corner plates that are curvy, except it's two of them. So make that two tall. Then a two by 10 plate all the way along and a one by 10 plate behind that using those uh, nice upward slope connections as well as hitting our circle plate there. And this thing is has a tendency to fall off. Do the same. Same thing over there, 2x10 and a 1x10, and then a 2x10 and a 2x8 to fill in the corner here. On top of that, do a 6x6 back here, and a 6x6 up there. Uh, let's do a 1x10 there, a 4x12, fill in that gap nicely. And then a 2x10 and a 1x10. Layer on top of that is going to be tile. Our last of those round curvy tiles. And we can finally connect these securely to something else. Do gray tile all around the top here. So 1x4, 1x6, 1x8, 1x4, 1x8, 1x1, 1x4. 1x6, 1x4. Then in this spot here, get one of these 2x2 two two round tiles with a stud in it or a round 2x2 two two jumper and surround that with some 2x2 two two tiles like so. And now we're going to build the clock tower. This is it. These are the last pieces. So the bottom should be a 3x3 three three plate, but I don't have any of those, so 2x3 plus 1x3 will have to work. Then some 1x1 one one tiles around the middles. And then it's time for more sub-assemblies. So 1x1 one one brick plus 1x1 one one corner snot brick plus 1x1 one one tiles in tan. Do four of those. Those fit into the four corners. Doop -bop -ba -deep -bop. Then in the center, a Travis brick. The first and only one in this build. Color doesn't matter here, it'll be totally hidden. Same with the one by one brick below it. Then for the clock faces, you're gonna get some one by two plates in dark tan, and then some one by one printed tiles. So I've got four of this compass piece from the Pirates of the Caribbean sets, which works as a nice little clock face at this size. Uh, you could also use this compass piece from the collectible minifigure series, the hiker has it. Uh, whatever you choose, do four of them. One, two, three, four. That goes in the center here. Do, 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 do. Uh, to connect all of that, take a four by four plate and connect them like so. And like so, so it's nice and centered on that four by four plate. And around the top, just a layer of plate outline here. Doesn't super matter, but I'm using quarter plates. And center in the top, a flagpole. Do, 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 do. And now you can take the clock tower and put it nicely on top of that jumper at a fun angle. So it lines up with this uh, vertical diagonal uh, below it. And there you have your Ginza Waco department store building, uh, which was in, again, the 1954 Godzilla film. Godzilla comes in and destroys it. 
but we're just gonna let this sit nice, safe, and sound since we spent so long building it. Isn't that right? Roar! Flames burn, burn. Roar, Godzilla. Thanks for watching this video. Please remember to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to Brick 101, and check out all of our other how to build videos.